Hi guys, I'm Woodcraft Hamster and I thought I'd do a quick fire lighting video again today um, and this time something that I don't use that often but I find really useful to keep in my fire lighting kit. Um, now this is potassium permanganate, I'll bring this a bit closer for you. So I've got a little vial of potassium permanganate here um, and another little vial of glycerin. Um, now you can pick this stuff up um, from a lot of different places, I tend to buy mine online. Um, there is a certain uh, well-known online auction website where you can buy these um, pre-made specifically for bushcraft and you can get the little vials like I've got here. Um, if, you, if you're going to use this quite regularly, I'd recommend not going that route, but maybe just get the little vials which are, you know, I think you can pick up like 10 for 99p in certain places. Um, and then you can basically buy a bottle of glycerin um, and a jar of potassium permanganate separately for, for a much lower price and you just basically refill these each time you need to. Um, now before I give you a demonstration of how this works, um, just a quick word of warning, if you are carrying this stuff with you for use in fire lighting, um, and as you'll see in a minute, it's, it's a very um, energetic, um, sort of violent reaction, um, and what you need to make sure you do is that these are kept either in separate parts of your pack, completely apart from each other, um, or alternatively, if, if you're able to do it, um, maybe keep one in your pack and one in a pocket, um, if you've got a separate um, sort of small pouch or something you keep separate to your pack, keep one element in there and one element elsewhere. Um, although I've never had it done personally, um, I have heard of people keeping these in the same compartment of your pack. Um, now they are quite sturdy, these things don't open particularly easily, but if they were both to open in your pack and mix together, um, you would very quickly have a, a, a damaged pack and, a, and potentially injury to yourself. So just, just be mindful of that. Um, now what I'll do, I'm going to let the, um, the camera roll from here um, and I'm just going to turn on a second camera so I can get a bit of a close-up for you as well. Um, and really, in order to, uh, to get this stuff to work, all you have to do, um, and this is just as simple as this, um, is you need to mix these two together. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a small piece of um, wood here just a little bit of a shaving, just to put it on. Um, you don't have to do this, uh, but I find it's quite useful, um, just so you've got somewhere to pull the, pull the peranganate. Now, what you want to do, so you'll open, open this pot, and you'll just pour this out onto whatever it is you're using. So that's now covered, and what you can do, or what I like to do, is just make a little indentation into the bottom of that potassium permanganate. Hopefully you can see that on the camera there. Make a nice little indent, which is where you're going to pour your glycerin. Um, now, the one thing I will say with this is you need to keep, um, well, you need to get your fire prepared in advance with this. Um, it's not like birch bark where you can get it lit and then you can start pour, putting things around it. You need a good fire lay, plenty of small kindling on there, um, this goes underneath with the rest of your tinder and as soon as it lights it will then take everything else up as well um, and you, you'll see that hopefully on here. So what you want to do, once you're ready, you just take your glycerin and you will pour it into the little um, indentation that you've made. And you don't need to use all of it, I'm going to use probably about half of this. Um, and this can take a little while, it can take up to sort of 30 seconds or so, so I'm going to sort of do this live. Um, and while I'm waiting for that to go, I'm just going to get a few little bits of um, sort of tinder, some shavings here, ready for when this lights, just so I can sort of hold this over and hopefully it'll take a flame. Now, on the uh, the other picture there, hopefully you'll see you, you'll see it's always start to bubble, um, and a lot of the time people will look at this and they'll think, oh, it's not working, um, you know, oh, I've done something wrong. Um, the short answer is no, you haven't. But you just have to give it enough time um, for the uh, the reaction to start. Now I can see it sort of bubbling a little bit there. Um, I think it's probably going to take a little bit longer, so we'll just carry on. You know, I wanted to do all of this live. I didn't want to have any cut scenes or anything like that, um, just so you can sort of see it in action. And in a minute, um, hopefully less than a minute, you will start to see this uh, this react, and you'll start to get flame. I'm going to just block that. Okay, so we're still waiting. Um, as I say, depending on the grade of the, um, the potassium manganate and the glycerin can take a while. This has been sitting in my workshop overnight, so this is quite cold as well. Um, I'm not sure whether temperature has any, uh, has any bearing on the reaction or not. I assume it may do. Um, however, it looks like we should be getting the reaction starting. 
uh, as you can see, he starts off with quite a lot of smoke. Hopefully that's not obscuring the camera too much. And as I say, this is a very violent reaction, as you can see. Um, and this is why it's always a very good idea to have your tinder and your kindling ready. You get a very, very good, very, very um, quick, hot flame. And if you imagine that I had a whole load of kindling wrapped, you know, stacked over the top of this, ready for this reaction to start, um, you've pretty much got an instant fire. Um, now, this is not a fire lighting technique that I use regularly, um, though I do always carry some of this in my kit. Um, the reason being is that if you are in really bad conditions, um, or let's say you're out and you just really can't get a fire to light, um, this stuff will give you a really, really good, quick, easy way to make a fire, guaranteed way to make a fire. Um, now obviously you, know that you need to make sure you have your preparation done first, you've got your tinder and your kindling ready. Um, this was just a sort of an example on you know, how to do it, but you know, I would have a substantial fire lay underneath this, ready to accept that, um, that heat and that flame to get everything burning. Um, so I hope that was useful guys, maybe give you something to think about, maybe something extra just to keep in your pack when you're out and about, as a, either as an emergency fire lighting um, technique and some material to keep with you, um, or if it's just something you want to play around with, have a little bit of practice with, um, you know, especially if I'm taking new people out camping for the first time, um, I find this is quite a, a good way of uh, you know, getting a fire going. It's, it's, it's a little bit more exciting than, than maybe using a match or a lighter, um, you know, or, or a fire steel for that matter, though, though you know, fire steels are very good to use and, and great for beginners. Anyway, guys, hope that was useful. Um, comments and questions below as usual. Um, hit subscribe if you want to see more, and I hope to see you next time. Cheers, guys.